Olivia Karras was a four-time All-American gymnast for the University of Michigan, and she teamed up with her dad, a fitness trainer, to write about the physical and emotional toll required to become a champion athlete. The father-daughter duo wrote a book called Confessions of a Division I Athlete, a Dad and Daughter's Guide to Survival. Jim and Olivia joining us this morning. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. So being an athlete at a division one, any athlete for that matter, but it takes particular, um, it's, it's so much to become a division one athlete, that level and maintaining it. Um, do you know what you're getting into when you get into that level of competition? I, I don't think anyone really does at the end of the day. I mean, I started gymnastics because I just loved flying and I loved tumbling and I loved jumping and I don't think I ever expected it to become this this thing that that it that it was which was my first job really Correct. and we talk about it a lot in the book that athletes at any level you really take on a, a full-time job and I don't think you expect it going into it and so it's important to know that your athletic career is going to turn into a not nine to five job. Right. It is the, an overtime job. Because you are practicing uh, in the morning, you're practicing at night, you're going on trips, you're traveling. Jim, how do you keep tabs on your on your student, on your on your child's physical and mental health during that process? Sean, you ask a lot of questions. You know, it's so interesting how parenting styles change and morph and don't say anything and then say a lot, you really need to do a check-in on both their mental and physical health. In writing the book, you would not believe the things that I learned about Olivia, some of which I could kill her, like <laughs> you know, with a back that's killing her, which she ultimately fractured. But you really got to keep tabs on what's going on. We used to have mental health day that when she came home for practice and was just destroyed, I would say, Olivia, what's tomorrow at school like? She goes, not a whole lot. I said, test papers. No, I said, you're sick tomorrow. You're sleeping in. And if you can believe it, she'd sleep until noon wow. because she was exhausted. So you have to have some of these things in place. And it made a whole difference. When she came out of her room, then the next day, she was herself again and not exhausted. Talk about, Olivia and Jim, either one of you can answer this. When you are going off to school, you are like leaving the nest. Uh, you're kind of learning your ways through adulthood. Uh, when you get to that level and just navigating college, for example, is hard. Navigating it when you have this extra job of being an athlete, uh, like how do you not, how do you keep tabs on your child, Jim, but not like get too involved in kind of being too much in a process of it and kind of living through them. Right, we usually checked in on the weekends. Her weekdays were so packed. And the funny thing about being an athlete at this level is that your schedule is so packed you really don't have a whole lot of time to get in trouble or to go off the rails in any way. It's school, practice, lift, homework, lather, rinse, repeat. That's it. So the weekends, we would definitely check in. And it was really great to be able to go out. And Ann Arbor is just about three and a half hours away, maybe three if you drive a little fast. And um, so we were able to see her often again, get that check-in in person. Olivia, what, what tips do you have for parents out there who want to be involved with their kids, but want, also don't want to be kind of hanging around too much and being that parents? I think it's important to find that trust with your kid that if they're happy and they're doing something they love, when, uh, it could be anything, you know, it could be a sport, it could be debate, it could be playing the violin or playing music, whatever your child loves, you have to trust that, that they love it and that they're gonna do it because they want to do it. And at the end of the day, they're gonna come to you when they might be having a, a hard time at practice if you're not overbearing them, asking questions like, was practice hard? Are you overwhelmed? My least favorite question getting in the car after practice was, how was practice? I'd oh. say good regardless. Nine out of 10 times, it wasn't that great. But I would say good because I didn't want to talk about it. But when I did want to talk about it, I always opened up about it. So my advice would be to let your child go and trust that they're doing it because they want to do it. You know, send them a little note here and there. Hey, thinking of you, give me a call when you get a chance. But they will come to you when they need guidance and help. Right. And talk I'm about it. The pictures, by the way, Sean, of her as a little girl. It's like it was yesterday. It really goes fast. I just put one into college freshman year a couple of weeks uh -huh. ago. It's it's weird, isn't it? Um, talk about 
if you're if you have a scholarship that is your job you know you have to have some focus on that how do you do this balance between doing that as your job and doing a good job with your grades it becomes a standard that you set as an athlete and as a student. So for instance, I, I looked at school a lot as I looked at gymnastics. I looked at it as I need to maintain a high level, a, a national championship level of academics right. as I would athletics. And that's a hard thing to do, but at the end of the day, there is no sports at a collegiate level with a scholarship if your academics are not good. Right. And that's an important thing to know because a lot of parents sometimes will think, oh, well, they, they have a scholarship. They're their job is athletics. Sure, it, part of it is, mm -hmm. but being a high level student right. and maintaining your grades, the NCAA will not let you compete if you go below a certain GPA or if there are any uh, anything that happens academically right. that, that will keep you out. And so you have to understand that balancing your athletic and academic ability is really, it's, it's really important and you have to learn how to have that equal relationship with both. It's totally. interesting, that's why, according to Inc. Magazine, 94% of all women in the C-suite at the executive highest mm -hmm. level- Were athletes. Were athletes. Yeah. Isn't that the thing? Yeah. It's really something. You learned the balance there. The name of the book, Confessions of a Division One Athlete. Jim and Olivia Karras, thank you so much for joining us. Do appreciate it. You can buy that book uh, right now on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Do appreciate your time, folks. Best of luck to every athlete and every student out there, too. Hey, Tim. Thank you so much.